presenting the adventures of Jungle Jim. Last week, while Derek Bluger was making another attempt to find out more about Jungle Jim from Lynn Chalmers, word came that three strangers had made their appearance in the hills. Bluger turned the missionary's daughter over to General Lin Pu and flew off to meet the intruders. In the meantime, Shanghai Lil asked to be taken to see Lin Chalmers. While back in the hills, Jim and Kolo buried Chung, the Chinese secret agent who was slain by a sniper. Then they started out on foot for the camp of Derek Bluger. The thrilling adventures of Jungle Jim are pictured each Sunday in the Comic Weekly, the world's greatest pictorial supplement of humor and adventure. The Comic Weekly, each page printed in full colors, is distributed everywhere as an integral part of your Hearst Sunday newspaper. And now we continue our story. Jungle Jim and Kolo crouch behind a pile of rocks in Suling Pass and peer cautiously over the top as they watch two sentries warming themselves at their campfire. Keep down, Kolo. Don't let them see us. Soldiers no see us, Pran. Have backs to us. Yes, but there's no telling how long they'll stay that way. We've got to get their clothes somehow. With those rifles and cartridge belts, they must be Bluger sentries. Yes, it one. Me think the Mongol men belong all same Bluger. Mm, I wonder where their posts are. Just by that campfire, or do they walk around? We find out, Juan Jim. Look, see. Uh, look out, Kolo. Here comes one of the soldiers this way. Get down here and don't say a word. Juan Jim, Mongol man go by. Yes, but he may be coming back. Yep. He's turning around. Here he comes. Quiet now. And there he goes back to the campfire. Look, look. One other Mongol man. Him come back campfire too. Yeah. That fire is the halfway mark between the two posts. Boy, it sure gets cold in this pass after the sun goes down. I don't blame him for staying close to that fire. Go catch a Mongol man now, Tuan Jim? Not just yet. We've got to take him by surprise. Look, look, Tuan Jim. Air wagon. What's that airplane doing around here? Oh, what did I tell you? That sniper reported to Bluger that we're on our way to his camp. That plane's looking for us. Get down here and keep close to the rocks, Kolo. There it goes. Did you see those two soldiers wave up at it as it flew over them? We've got to work fast, Colo. Now listen. You crawl over that way and take care of the sentry over there. Yes, you I'll take care of this one. And when you get in the far side, whistle like a night bird. Then we'll both jump out and rush them together. Yes, it one. Colo, give bird. Okay. Let's get going. plane might come back any minute. Let's see us from the light from the fire. We better drag him over near those rocks. Come on. And a boy, go. Come on, drag him right away. Eight take one. Here. They can't see us over here. Now get the uniforms off these boys. We've got to change clothes with them before they come back from Dreamland. Yes, it's one. Kolu do. Twan. We be dressed like yellow faces, but no have yellow faces. Me black, you white. Yes, I know, Kolo. We must be careful. But at least this will be something of a disguise. They won't recognize us from a distance. Yes, it's one. Which way we go to Bluga camp? The airplane came from over that hill, remember? We'll take our cue from that and go that way. In the meantime, in Bluger's camp, Lin Fu takes Shanghai Lil to see Lin Chalmers. Visitor wishing to see you, Missy Chalmers. <laughs> A visitor for me? Who is it? Believe it or not, 
It means. I'm hoping you ladies get very friendly. <laughs> Who are you? I don't suppose you could guess. No, I've never seen you before. And I've never seen you. But that doesn't mean I don't know who you are, Lynn Chalmers. Why, you must be Lily DeVille. That's right. Only my friends know me better as Shanghai Lil. What are you doing here? Visiting an old friend of mine. Oh, of course. Lin Wu. Now, listen here, Miss Chalmers. Don't let the name Shanghai Lil give you any wrong ideas. It's Derek Bluger, who's my old friend. Well, as far as I'm concerned, you can have him. I don't admire your choice of friends. Oh, no? <laughs> now, isn't that odd? Why? Somehow, I got the idea that you and I have a mutual friend that you admire very much. Oh, you mean Jim? Yes. Jungle Jim Bradley. Well, your friendship with Jim happened by chance. Not from choice. I'm afraid you're right about the chance part. It was chance that brought us together. But it was choice that has kept us friends. If you're such a good friend of Jim's, why did you bring him over to China? Because he was wanted over here. Now, I can believe that. And it's your old friend, Mr. Derek Bluger, who wants him. Well, it seems like that, doesn't it? But Derek's not the only one who'd like to see Jim. Oh, I suppose you're dying to see him. Well, hardly dying, Miss Thomas. But I would like to see him very much. That's why I'm having this little chat with you. I don't understand. I thought, since Jim is our one mutual friend, that you might tell me where he is. You ought to know, if anyone does. I? You brought him over from Borowani. You saw him laugh. That's quite true. Unfortunately, I was the last to see him. But since then, he has dropped completely out of sight. Yes, I know. Oh, I wish I could be sure he was safe. Ah, then you know something of where he ought to be. He, uh, he wrote you a letter telling you his plan? No, he didn't write me any letter. And let me tell you, Lily DeVille, I don't know where Jim Bradley is. But if I did, I'd never tell you. <laughs> Curtain, in the back, too. And the orchestra swings into the stars and stripes forever. Near if you like. But it's the truth. <laughs> How apropos. <laughs> Derek told me you talked like a heroine in a 10, 20, 30 melodrama. I can't help what I sound like. I'm telling the truth. Now listen here, Miss Chalmers. As woman to woman, I don't blame you for sticking to your first story. But you can take my word for it, it'll be better for you and Jim if you come clean and tell me where he is. Why would it? I can't answer that just now. But are you going to tell me? I'm telling you the truth. I don't know where Jim Bradley is. So you won't talk, eh? <laughs> All right, you little fool. You've had a chance and you didn't take advantage of it. I'll let Derek handle you from now on. A few hours later, the plane piloted by Derek Luger roars in from the hill. Lin Pu and Shanghai Lil watch it circle for a landing. Has Derek captured the strangers, Lin Pu? We soon know. Most high superior now, landing plane. Missy Chalmers still holding tongue, eh, Shanghai Lil? Yes, the little fool. I told her I'd let Derek handle her from now on. <laughs> I not care to be in Miss Chalmers' shoes now. Most high superior not in very good humor. Look. You're right, Lin Koo. He's in a black anger if I ever saw him in one. I guess the stranger's escaped. Well, well, what are you two standing there for? Are we waiting to welcome you, Most High Superior? You didn't find the intruders, Derek? If I had, they'd be here with me now, wouldn't they? Don't be so naive, little... Yen Sing! Yen Sing! Yes, Most High Superior? I come in. Lin Fu, has the Chalmers girl talked yet? No, Most High Superior. Missy Chalmers still deny she know anything about Jungle Jim Bradley. She does, huh? We'll tend to her later. Just now I want to deal with that sentry from the hills who brought word of the stranger. You called me, Most High Superior? Yes. I want you to bring that sentry to me in my quarters for court martial. Have assembly sounded. Arouse the entire camp. Yes, Most High Superior. At once. I didn't find the strangers, Lin Fu, but I found three horses running loose in Su Ling Pass. Ah, were you able to identify owners, Most High Superior? I'm almost certain that one of them was Jim Bradley. 
What makes you so sure, Derek? They had abandoned some of their supplies. They were stamped as having been purchased in the international settlement of Shanghai. That's not definite proof, Derek. It might have been that long-nosed Tom singer, Manly Chalmers. Yes, I know that, Lil. That's why I said I was almost certain. We'll question the sentry and see if he can furnish definite descriptions of the three strangers. Excellent idea, most high superior. Excellent. Do you not think so, Shanghai Lee? Yes, I couldn't have planned it better myself. As soon as the soldiers are assembled in pool, let me know. I'll be in my quarters. You come with me, lady. All right, lady. In here. I've got an assignment for you, Lil. Yes? Well, what is it, Derek? I haven't been able to make any headway trying to get that missionary's daughter to tell us what she knows. Maybe a woman could turn the trick. I want you to try. <laughs> well, thanks for the compliment, Derek. But I've already interviewed her while you were out searching. Smart girl. And? And I wasn't so smart. I didn't get anything out of her but another denial. Still playing possum, is she? Playing clam, I should say. All right, then we'll have a clam bake. I've got an idea, though. A little touch of court martial. No, no, that would be too simple. And it would get us nowhere. I'm going to... I'll tell you later, Lil. Come in. Here is Sentry, Most High Superior. Bring him here in front of the desk. Over here, you. Most High Superior, camp is drawn up in formation. We await orders. Good, I have something to say to them in a moment. But first, Yen Sing, you get the Charmer's girl and bring her here. Yes, Most High Superior. So you were the sentry stationed at the entrance to Tsu Ling Fair? Yes, Most High Superior. What's your name? Wali, Most High Superior. Now, uh, Wali, you saw three foreigners approaching our territory? Yes, Most High Superior. Could you see them very clearly? Oh, yes, Most High Superior. They are against face of moon. Tell me what they look like. Two men wear sun helmets. One looked tall and thin. One looked fatter. Jerry, can I ask him a question? Hmm? Oh, yes, go ahead, little. Wali... You say you got a good look at those men. Did one of them have a little beard? No, Missy. No man have beard. If one had, Lil, you think it would be... The missionary, our friend, the Reverend Chalmers. And since none had a beard, it's a pretty good chance Jim Bradley's arrived. Yes, dear, it sounds like it. Wally, did one of the three wear a turban wrapped around his head? Yes, Missy. One wore turban. That's Bradley's man, Friday. I guess we've identified your visitors, Derek. Jim Bradley in my territory, huh? Eh? And you let him escape, Wally... Most High Superior, I not know who strangers are. That's your mistake, Wally, but you're going to pay for it. Oh, Most High Superior. Shut up, you. I, I not know. Open the door, I not know. I not know. Well, if it isn't the girl, Scout. Bring this Chalmers over here, Yen Sing, in this chair. And take this stupid sentry outside. I'll deal with him in a few moments. Yes, Most High Superior. Come, Wally. So, Lin Chalmers, you still claim to know nothing of Jungle Jim's plan. Yes, and it's the truth. We'll soon find out. Two foreigners are coming here. We suspect that one of them is Jungle Jim. I'm going to set a trap for him with you as the bait. What kind of a trap is Derek Bluger going to set for Jungle Jim? The adventures you have just heard dramatized appear in full-color action pictures in the Comic Weekly, the world's greatest supplement of humor and adventure. The big Comic Weekly distributed with your Hearst Sunday newspaper everywhere. In the Comic Weekly, you will see all of the famous characters who live in the world of color pictures. There's Bringing Up Father, Sentinel Louie, Toots and Casper, Flash Gordon, the Cats and Yammer Kids, and many others. There are also pictures of high spots in the careers of heroes of American history. Don't forget our date next week, same time, same station, for a continuation of the adventures of Jungle Jim. Jungle Jim.